Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar from Hot Docs and K2. Specifically, today we're looking at uh, a client onboarding showcase, how you can use uh, the power of K2 and Hot Docs as two market-leading technologies together uh, within a business process. And today uh, you have myself, I'm Graham, uh, I'm Head of Global Services at Hot Docs, and I am also joined by Anthony Molyneux from K2. So just a little bit about uh, where we are going today, what we're going to be looking at. We're looking at moving from paper to profitability and how the two technologies can help you automate the creation of simple or complex documents, optimize your existing systems and processes, and provide that visibility that you need during your processes to allow businesses to make better decisions about how to run uh, different parts of the business. So today, uh, Anthony is going to be taking you through uh, a demonstration, uh, and I'll be chipping in with a few things about hot dogs. But we want this to be interactive. You'll notice that there is a questions bar in GoToMeeting. If you have any questions at any time, uh, put them in there and we will come and have a Q&A at the very end and answer as many as we can. If we don't get to your question, I apologize, we'll, we'll answer them um, after the webinar and get back in touch as soon as possible. We'll also be making this uh, video and webinar uh, available to you shortly after we are finished here today. So I think just before we, we get into the demonstration, just briefly on who we are in terms of Hot Docs and K2. Well, first of all, with Hot Docs, um, we are a document automation provider. We uh, allow people to transform documents that they use on a regular basis into automated dynamic templates. And we've got well over a million users worldwide across more than 9,000 customers. And we're the pioneer and global market leader with well over 20 years experience in providing this technology. We pioneered it uh, in the late 80s and have carried on innovating since then. And we're currently deployed in over 60 countries, um, primarily in the UK and the US, but we have a global partner network, including technology partners such as K2, who we deliver our technology through. Uh, we primarily work in legal, banking and insurance uh, are in the financial services sector as well and we have uh, lots of top global banks, lots of top global law, law firms and that's kind of underpinned by our Gartner status as a cool vendor and best of breed technology and also our Microsoft Gold certification. So that's who we are, but what do we actually do? What's our technology all about? Well, it's about reducing the risk in creating documents. When you are entering data and collecting data to put into them, making sure that the data goes into the right places in the right formats and that all the paragraphs and all the, the right clauses go in the right places depending on how the document needs to be structured. It's about enhancing compliance. How do you make sure that your documents contain all the relevant information to make them compliant to the rules and regulations of the governing bodies that are in your industry? It's about creating efficiency. How do you standardize? How do you reduce risk, but also make your document production more efficient? And how do you enforce standardizations, cl clauses, headers, footers, logos, branding across all your business critical documentation? And we do this by allowing non-technical business users to take the documents they create on a regular basis in the format that they're in, typically Word or PDF and allow them to transform them into intelligent templates by capturing all the changeable pieces of information and the business rules and inserting hot docs placeholders instead. And we call that phase one, the content authoring phase. And once you've created a template, you can then distribute that template to end users to consume. So that template can then be used instead of opening up Word and manually editing and copy and pasting into a document. We allow users to enter information into an interactive interview, a data gathering process. And as you answer questions, questions appear and disappear depending on your previous answers in a web browser or on a tablet device. And that's the data gathering process. But in this instance today, we're actually getting data from a different source. We're actually getting data from K2 that's managing the entire end-to-end -end process and interactions with other systems. 
So instead of that interview, we're actually capturing the data in a different way. And once we've captured the information and data for your documents, we simply take that data, and today it's from K2, and put it into our intelligent assembly engine, and out pops a document or a suite of related documents. And we capture that information for later. So we can reuse that same information to produce multiple documents throughout the process. So that's a very high level about what Hotdocs does, and we're going to talk a little bit later about Hotdocs connects into K2. But for now, I'm going to hand off to Anthony, who's going to take you through a little bit about K2 and the demonstration itself. Uh, thanks, Grant. All right. So um, K2, well, we've been around for, for a number of years, since around about 2001. Um, we were more than 1,500 customers across 84 different um, sort of countries. Um, and 30 percent of our customers are Fortune 100 companies. Now, very much like Hot Docs, we cover all sorts of vertical markets from legal through financial services to local and central government. But what do we actually do? Now, K2 is a business process application platform which allows you to turn complex work into powerful business app process applications, such as you know customer onboarding, um, policy approvals, vendor management, to name a few. Now, a K2 business application is typically made up of four key elements. Uh, first of which would be a K2 smart form, which is an intuitive mobile ready e-form that allows you to capture and gather information from different people, systems, and departments. Um, that might be backed up by a workflow process, which is typically created through a visual workflow designer, which allows you to rapidly build and deploy low-code applications that are agile, scalable, and reusable, um, thus resulting in modern processes. Uh, the third um, element in that um, business application would be um, some reporting where our process insights give us um, better uh, sort of quality data uh, and allowing us to make uh, so better decisions uh, with either out of the box or third party BI tooling. And then finally, um, all the data for these applications would be coming from online or on premise solutions that are integrated by K2 smart objects so that they can be reused across different smart forms, workflows, um, and reports. And altogether, those elements would be utilized to create um, your business um, sort of solution or business applications. Now, in the demonstration, we'll see a few of those business applications, um, the first of which um, is going to be um, our client onboarding, where we are going to capture some client information we're going to submit that for review and approval in a workflow process, and then at the end of the process, we are going to create a client contract. Um, backing that up would be after we've onboarded our client, we're then going to go into a creating a matter. So are we going to cut some matter details for our client? Are we going to submit for review and approval? And then really depending on the outcome of that, um, of, of that matter review process, we're either going to create a client engagement or a matter declined uh, letter. And then finally, and then probably most importantly, um, is matter billing. So we've, we've onboarded our client, we've created our matter, we're now at the process of want to actually create some bills. So we're going to capture some information, submit that for review and approval, and at the end of the process, we are going to be generating um, an invoice which can be sent out um, sort of to the client. Now, what you will be seeing are very simplified versions of what would be a typical um, sort of um, on premise uh, sort of solution, and the idea is we, this is to really highlight the technologies um, sort of underpinning these solutions. So we're going to switch across to <clears throat> um, the demo environment um, where we can have a look at our client onboarding solution. So, so welcome to sort of Daly and Skinner, our fictitious law firm. Uh, we'll be starting with a client onboarding dashboard, which gives us access to and visibility of all running and completed client onboarding processes. So here yeah, we have some high-level metrics that show us the number of active, overdue, and urgent applications. Um, imagine this at the, maybe at the higher level, not just looking at our client onboarding, app, but across multiple um, sort of applications as well. So we can immediately get that snapshot view and understanding what exactly is going on within our business. Yeah, we can also see um, the status of all active, completed, and cancelled um, processes with information such as maybe our SLAs or priorities, um, where we are currently within the, um, within the workflow process, 
and then you can access additional information like the K2 view flow report, which we'll talk about in a, in a few minutes, and I can drill in to get additional information about this um, sort of process. And that information can be sourced from multiple line of business systems that we can then bring together into a single interface, um, allowing us to make our um, decisions and view our, our data. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to onboard a new client. Now, this is going to be a very simplified um, sort of um, onboarding solution, so very simplified onboarding um, form. We're not going to capture a huge amount of details, but I think it will give us an illustration of what um, the technology is capable of. So dependent on um, our client types, we can show and, and hide and, and enable and disable various bits of the form. So what this allows us to do is provide a great user experience as people go through the form. So really guiding a guiding our users through the um, process of capturing um, the appropriate um, information. Now, this capability, along with things like validation, data lookups, etc., ensures that we have clean and accurate data being entered into um, sort of the form. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set up somebody, maybe it's a limited company, uh, uh, stock, stock Industries, obviously what I was doing on the weekend, oh, wrong one. Um, we can look, do a, some a, a lookups, and what I'm going to do is go and um, sort of do a, a lookup against a backend data source. So again, um, obviously very important that we have our correct, correct clients information. So this is doing a postcode lookup uh, and returning to me a set of, of defined um, postcode information. Um, so again, making sure that we get clean um, sort of data within our uh, system. So we're going to get this is going to be Tony. Stock.com and 555, so it's a 555, 67890. Main business, I don't know. Espionage, client language, English, country of ownership, United States. So here again, we are utilizing lookup information from a line of business system. Uh, we're going to assign a client partner to, uh, to this uh, new client. So I'm going to make it as Rick as a client partner. Let's assume they have some sort of DUMS number. A client chargeable status, well, definitely is going to be client chargeable. Um, highly confidential. And a default currency is going to be US dollars. Now, a lot of this is obviously just made up for the purposes of this demonstration, but I think we can sort of see if we can really easy to fill out the, the uh, capture the appropriate information in this, um, in this form. And it disappeared. And the priority as well, we're going to make it high priority. Um, here I can select a security review. The idea is that we can process our, our, this work according to the information we capture, um, and, and that certainly hand, as would sort of uh, apply to how we route information within the process. But I'm not going to select a security review. Um, we're going to click the submit button, um, and what I'm now going to be doing is, is saving the form data into my system or systems of record which could be a database, a CRM system, a practice management uh, sort of system, or a combination of these systems. Um, in addition to saving the information, we're also starting off a workflow process, and here we can see it's a COB13 is our new process um, that has uh, sort of started. So if we look at um, our main page, there we can see we have an active process. Um, it's our high priority. And what I can then drill into and go and have a look at is the K2 view flow report for this workflow process instance. So what this does is this gives us a real-time view of what is happening within this process. So here we can see um, the process path is successfully completed. So the stuff in green, the blue is where we are at the moment. We can drill in to get additional information like, you know, what is the state of the process? When did it start? How long has it been running for? Who initiated it? Um, very importantly, where we assign tasks to people, we can see who the participants are, so we can, can see who it's been assigned to, when they got it, when they completed it, what action they take. So here we're providing a full end-to-end -end visibility of this workflow process as it's executing. Uh, we're gathering a lot of uh, very useful information which we can you know, sort of use for auditing purposes, or even do things like um, identify where our process bottlenecks um, sort of are occurring. So what we're going to do is I'm going to switch um, a role. So we sent a remit to a client partner. The client partner was Rick. So what I'm going to now do is open up um, 
um, our application as the user Rick. So we can see the top right hand side is Rick Cowan. Um, I have a, a work list presented to, to me as, as a user Rick. And what this work list does is allows me to access all work that's been assigned to me. Um, I could be getting this information across multiple devices um, if, I, if I wanted to. So uh, we have task list applications for Android, for iOS, and for Windows devices. So you can get it um, on your mobile applications. We could also sending out email notifications as part of that process as well. But what we're going to do is we're just going to be working with a work list in a, uh, in a web form here. I'm going to open up this, uh, this work list task. It's going to present to me a form. So here we decide what information is pertinent to, uh, for Rick to make a decision whether to approve or um, reject um, this um, sort of client. Um, here, as I said, we can all our information is available to me. Uh, we have some additional tabs. We have our comments. We might have an audit history, etc. Um, I also have what we call ad hoc capabilities or ad hoc actions. So this be, might be things that we are not necessarily want to build into our main process, but we want to be able to still do in a controlled, managed way. And that might be something, something like log a conversation. So we, we say we're going to onboard this client, we maybe want to give them a phone call um, to discuss um, you know, you know, some, some information that may be missing. We can do that, go and log that conversation that uh, has taken place as part of this um, onboarding record. And that will be available to us um, for all time. Now, so we're going to keep this quite simple. We're going to just going to say, OK, um, at this point in time, we're happy. We're going to approve this, this, this client. We're going to submit that, um, that task. That's going to communicate back to the workflow process um, and move the process on. So if I switch back into my view flow report, what we should see is that moving on and our task being routed accordingly. So based on the outcome, so I selected the, to be approved. Um, I had a number of paths I could have followed. Um, I could have, if it's approved, but it was a pro bono case or pro bono client, it would have gone to a different path for maybe additional review. Um, if it was approved, uh, but we required security review, we'd go to the security review team. But if none of those conditions were required, so um, we would then bypass those stages. So what this means is you don't necessarily have to follow exactly um, every single step, every single time. You can really just route this process according and um, sort of to the right people based on um, sort of business rules. So what is happening behind the scenes now um, is, uh, is that we are now calling out to um, hot docs um, to generate the client contract. Um, so it will pass through the information to hot docs. Um, it will generate the contract. When that's completed, we'll then move on to the next step in the process, which we could be doing thing could be doing things like creating our client record and maybe in our practice management solution um, system, uh, maybe generating a client workspace, um, notifying the client and the partner that they've, they've been onboarded, um, etc. And here we can see it's all gone green. So we've, very, we've successfully um, sort of completed all those stages. So if I then go back in and do a refresh on our client onboarding list, what we'll then be able to see is we have a completed um, record in here. And if I open up this record, this opens up a read-only view of the of, of the actual um, the, the request itself, as well as giving me access to the client contract record. So if I open that up, what you will now see is our client agreement, which is being generated um, for me through our hot docs um, sort of integration. So uh, as you can see here. Now I'm going to hand back um, for firstly open up the client contracts. Um, uh, template and then hand this back, back to Graham to explain how this all works. Great, fantastic. So what, what happened there and what you saw as the view flow went through the process was a call out to hot docs and all that data that had been collected by K2 smart farms and had been pushed back to other systems then got pulled together and passed to hot docs and it got pushed into what's called the hot docs hub and this one actually sits uh, in one of our uh, in our cloud and it passes over all the data and we then assemble the documents and pass the documents back into K2 once they've been assembled and we also keep a record of that document being assembled as a work item but we can talk a little bit about that later.
But at the moment, what you can see on the screen is a template. This is what our templates look like. Uh, we can see that we have placeholders here. This is where the data goes. But we're not only just dealing with data, we're also dealing with the formatting. So what we're saying is when you pass in the client name, I want you to then capitalize the data as it goes in. So K2 doesn't need to know anything about the styling, the formatting of the document. All it needs to know about is the data and pass it to Hotdocs. We handle the rest. We then have the client type. Now, depending on whether this client type starts with a vowel or not, we put an A or an AN in front of this by using this prefix computation. So we're not just, again, doing data and formatting. We're actually computing what should go into the document based on the data being passed in. And if we skip down, we're looking at data going in here, main business, things like that. But if I come down into here, you can see that we have some green markup. And that green placeholder is a conditional paragraph. So if the chargeable status for this new client is chargeable, then we put these numbers, yeah, these points in here. If it's pro bono, the pro bono clause needs to go in. And Hotdocs automatically updates all the cross-references, tables of contents to match the inserted and removed paragraphs based on the business rules. So this is a truly intelligent template, and you create these in Word. You don't have to have any other special skills than being able to understand how to put the placeholders in via the ribbon toolbar within Word. Very simple. And then K2 connects all the data together via the service broker. <clears throat> Thanks, Graham. All right. So, um, so moving on, right? So I mentioned earlier, we'll look at sort of we've now onboarded our client. Uh, we're now going to um, sort of uh, uh, create a new matter for our client, or, 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 or well, first of all, review and approve that, and then create a new matter. Um, this is my client matter inception home page, as you can see, very similar to what we saw for the client onboarding. And the reason for that is I can reuse components um, that I previously created. So as you're building up more of these applications, right, we create this um, sort of almost a toolbox of reusable assets that can be reused um, and um, it really allows us to very rapidly build out these applications. Now, we're going to create a new matter. Um, we're going to go and do our client search. So this is uh, Tony. Right. Um, this is doing a search against our back-end system. That could be a CRM, that could be our practice management, or, or, the, or the system of record where we stored our client information. Um, at this point, I mean, I'm allowing my, uh, my user to maybe update the records. They don't have to now go into some other system to update it. If I wanted to, they could update this, this record directly here. Um, where we're going to go and create the matter. Um, so this is going to going to call this matter. So this is K2 hot. Uh, docs webinar, um, and we're going to go and select some um, you know, transaction types and um, sort of work types and where the office is and risk assessment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not going to bother with filling out a lot of this other information um, other than maybe attaching some documents. So part of any process, what we can also do is upload some documents. So in this case, it might be a client pricing plan, uh, maybe a retainer letter as well that we want to upload. Um, and that we want now as part of this onboarding or matter inception um, sort of record. So we're going to say, okay, happy there. We're going to go to the next page. And here again, we are really sort of guiding the user through the process of creating this record um, until the point that they're going to submit it. Now, I'm not going to bother with filling out related to the other parties. We're going to submit this. Now, what's going to happen again is, so we're going to save the data into our into our system or systems of record. Um, for this, for things like the documents, what we could be doing is uploading that into our document management system. So that could be iManage, it could be SharePoint, it could be any other um, sort of system that we might have in place. And then, very importantly, is as this <clears throat> matter goes through the various um, sort of stages, we would then make that those documents available as a set of links back to um, the, the you know the people who are who need to see that information. So I'll quickly just going to have a look at the view flow. We're not going to take this any further because I think we're running, off, running um, sort of short on time. Here is a much more complex workflow process um, that, that we could be following. And again, we'd be routing this, um, this, uh, uh, the, the task in this process according to our business rules. Uh, based on it being this, this uh, matter being accepted or rejected, we'd either go 
and create at the at this point a client engagement letter. Again, calling out through to Hotdocs to the appropriate template and populating it with information. And then once that's completed, we go and create the matter in PMS, go and generate a matter workspace, notify the client partner and the client, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Or we could be maybe declining the matter, we've created the client letter, and again we would be sending that out to the um, to the appropriate people. Now Let's assume that we've gone and we've gone through the process and we've onboarded that we, we've uh, sort of accepted um, a matter. What we would then do is go and go and bill for that matter. So this is our billing homepage. Again, you know we, we we're using many components, so speed up the development. Here we can see the a list of all our active matters, and this could be filtered for you know the, the logged on user or you know, the group they belong to, etc. For example, I click on the Barclays one. On the right-hand side, what you will see is our matter bills. So these are our various bills that have been either sub um, sort of completed or, or submitted or in the process of being submitted. So for example, January and February, we can see they're completed and the payment has been received. Uh, March, the um, bill is still sitting with our accounts, accounts department in the review stage while, while we haven't actually submitted a bill for April um, sort of yet. And at the top, you have our billing summary, so immediately Having visibility of where is our cash? You know, you know, have the have the bills been paid? Have they been invoiced? Or are we still waiting um, for those to go through the process? So what I'm going to do is go and create a new, um, maybe a new bill, just generate a new bill. Uh, we'll open up our form uh, where we can go in and add sort of clients, um, sort of this time, time and fees. Let's go to six. This is client meeting. And the rate, I don't know, 500, uh, 4.6 hours, and I don't know, maybe some uh, different things. So, um, attend court. And where we, in this case, I'm putting in an item description, um, but we might be doing this um, sort of for uh, utilizing a lookup. Um, of you know, sort of, so we can have a, a, a category of um, our sort of items if we wanted to. So we're going to say, okay, we have our two items that we're going to create a bill for. Let's assume we're happy with that. We're going to now submit that. Um, again, that's going to save our information. It's going to start a workflow um, sort of process where we are going to be creating um, a task for somebody to to complete. Um, but what we also will have is a ability to go in and look at a read-only copy of this um, of this bill. Um, so this actually might I'll take a few seconds to sort of generate. So we will just give that a, a couple of seconds um, because we are not we when we submitted that we also called out through out, out again to um, Hot Docs um, to go and generate a in this case going to be a Word document view um, or a Word document. Um, sort of invoice or, or bill. So that might take a few seconds just to come through. Let's go in and see if that comes through here now. There we go. Okay. And we now have this draft invoice available to us. Now, in this case, it's a, it's a, it's a Word document. The idea is we could potentially go in and make some changes. Um, but it's also got the Word draft, so we can see that that's happening. Now, I know, if, uh, so Graham, if you want to talk about um, this. Sorry, yeah. Just yeah. as we go, as as we go through this, um, uh, as uh, Anthony's gone through this, all those line items have gone in. Obviously, Hotdocs handles some uh, simple data, so one-to-one -one mapping, like names, addresses, but it also handles some more complex data, like repeated lists of information. So here we've got what we call repeats. So we've got lines uh, of uh, rates and hours, and lines of expenses that can all get mapped from all the data sources. Uh, in K2 and fed through seamlessly into tables. Now, notoriously, tables are difficult to do when you're automating documents, but with Hot Docs, it is extremely easy to do. And I guess the next bit that Anthony's probably going to go on to is we've watermarked that with draft. But obviously, with the watermarks, we can conditionally add them and remove them. So the next time we go through and we authorize that bill, the draft will be taken away and be no longer in the document. It will be a finalized bill. Great, thanks, thanks, Ram. Yeah, so I see we are running out of time. I mean, really, what the the, the, the last things I like I'd like to add to this will would be that um, 
at the end of this, this billing process, assuming it's gone through the various stages of getting approved, what we would do is rather than generate a Word document, we would generate a PDF um, sort of document without the word draft, um, and then we could automatically maybe attach that um, that document to an email, send that out to our directly to our client, or maybe depending on their preference, maybe mail that out as um, as a letter. Now, the final thing I'd like to add is obviously very importantly we've seen some visibility of these applications as they go through the various stages and and um, at the various statuses. The ERA is utilizing some sort of um, tooling or reporting tools to create some more graphical type reports. So in this case, it's looking at our matters, the matters by offers and by client partner, or we can actually look at our um, K2 information, specifically our process information specifically, uh, where we can see things like um, in our sort of client matter inception, uh, we can see the various um, sort of stages that we could be going through, and we could be getting out things like, you know, what is which stage is taking the longest, who is the, you know, in terms of users are taking the longest to process things, etc. So um, we can then utilize that data to optimize our processes. Okay, so so in terms of the demonstrations, um, that that is it. It's been a lot of lot to see in a very short period of time. So thank you very much. Um, I think we'd then switch across to any questions. Yeah, great. If you could just pull up that final slide on there, there's some uh, email addresses for us uh, and for you to, uh, if you want any more information to get in touch, uh, info at K2, and uh, you can get in touch with me as well, and I'll forward any requests on to uh, our, our uh, marketing team, and they can get back in touch. But in terms of questions, um, somebody just uh, pinged me a note asking me, is there a way to, con they've got an internal system, that they've built themselves with their own databases. Is there any way to get the data from that into Hot Docs via K2? I'll let you answer um, from a K2 perspective, Anthony. Um, uh, yes, absolutely. So K2 um, has standard connectors for um, databases like SQL and for Oracle, um, allowing us to then um, access the data in those databases in a read-write manner. But also we have other, other, other connectors um, you know that that we can either custom create, um, or you know maybe it's been created by third parties um, that can allow to connect to different types of databases. But the short answer is absolutely, we'd be able to access that um, those databases and then obviously connect through to Hot Docs as we've been doing um, doing the demo. Yeah, so I guess we've not had time to maybe cover how you do the connection today, but effectively on the canvas when you are designing a a, a process within K2, uh, Hot Docs exposes the placeholders for each of the documents, so each of the templates, so you can uh, absolutely be able to drag and drop the uh, the data onto the uh, the canvas and into the fields within the document as well. And we've got a question, it's more about ROI, I think we'll have to follow this one up, but do we have specific data on ROI for law firms who are using this solution? I think what I'll do is I'll park that just now, we don't have any in the presentation, but we can certainly from a hot docs perspective and from a K2 perspective, uh, send some of that data out and send some links after this. Uh, yeah. webinar as well. I mean, I mean just, just quickly from a K2 perspective, I mean, if they go to the K2 website, K2.com, um, there is a, um, a white paper on that available that was actually done by a third party, um, by Forrester, looking at ROI. Um, it's not specific to law firms, but, you know, it's quite it's gener generic across many businesses. But that will give us the best, the best indication. That, that can go and download and access it straight away. Fantastic. Okay, and one final question, I think, before we end. Um, I have DocuSign as my e-signature tool. Um, is there a way to be able to round the process off with automation and documents, the business process, and e-signature? Um, so for, from a KT perspective, absolutely, yes. Um, we have out-of-the-box integration into DocuSign. So what we could be, could be doing as part of the workflow process is, you know, um, so when we generate, um, sort of connect to, to, to uh, hot dogs to generate the documents. They could also be adding the, the, the signature um, locations, and then we could be managing that the process of capturing the signatures also in the K2 workflow process. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and, and hot dogs as well from our end. We have uh, we have lots of customers who use DocuSign uh, as well, um, who can. Um, who, who can fire out documents, uh, have them signed and come back in as well. So there's many ways to be able to achieve that uh, in the process. So uh, another question is about just when will the recording come out? Uh, we will get this recording of the webinar as soon as we can. 
hopefully later today, um, and uh, we can get that out so you can rewatch it or send it on to other people within your organisation who may be interested in this. Um, so I think that's all we've got time for. Sorry, we've run about six minutes over for this, but a lot of things to get through. Hopefully that has given you a good overview uh, of how you can use uh, K2 and Hot Docs together for client matter opening and give you an insight into what other processes you may be able to use this for as well. So again, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for spending it with us uh, looking at this and we will speak to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much.